Welcome for this mathematics lesson. We are continuing with mathematics paper 1, number 24 on differentiation. The equation of the curve is given by y equals to 4x power 3 plus 9x squared minus 30x plus 10. Determine part 1, the equation of the tangent to the curve at x equals to negative 3. So we should know that uh, for us to get equation of the tangent, we are first of all supposed to get what we call the gradient function. So gradient function is usually given by deriving the curve. The derivative of y with respect to x gives us the gradient function of this curve. Therefore, 4x power 3, now we drop the power to this part so that it multiplies the 4. 12x and now the power which was 3 now becomes squared. The next we apply the same. This is 2. We drop it here to make this 9. 18. Then the power x now which was squared now becomes power 1. Negative x is to power 1. So when we drop 1 it remains 30 the way it is. And now x which was to power 1 now becomes power 0. And when it is power 0 it becomes 1 it becomes 1. So 30 remains the way it is. Then the constant here disappears. Because 10, it means there is a x here which is to power 0. So when you drop the 0 at this point, it just disappears. So now we have our gradient function here. We can get the gradient itself at the point where x equals to negative 3. So the gradient m is equivalent to 12 into negative 3 squared plus 18 into negative 3 minus 30. So we can work out this. The gradient itself is going to be when we take 12 into negative 3, we square. Then uh, plus 18 into negative 3 minus 30. This is giving us exactly 24. So the gradient is 24. And now <clears throat> we have point x equals to negative 3. At that point where x is negative 3, we can also find the value of y according to the original equation. So the value of y is going to be 4 into negative 3 squared plus 9 into negative 3 squared minus 30 into negative 3 plus 10. Yes. So according to the original equation, we can get the value of y when x is negative 3. 4 into negative 3 cubed plus 9 into negative 3 squared minus 30 into negative 3. Then now plus 10. This is going to be 73. So the value of y is 73. So we have a gradient of 24. And a coordinate, which is negative 3, 7, 3, along the curve. Therefore, now, to get equation now, we need to just express this gradient. Just need to express this gradient. Whereby, we will say the gradient, which is 24, is given by change in y. So, y minus 7, 3, out of change in x, x minus negative 3, making it a 3. So now we can cross multiply. We will have y minus 7, 3 being equal to 24 by everything here. This will be 24x plus 24 by 3, which gives us 7, 2. Yeah. So we can remain with y at this point. y equals to 24x then we have 72 plus 73. This is going to be 145 equals to 145. So this is going to be the equation of the tangent at that particular point. Because we usually say that uh, the gradient of the curve at a certain point is equivalent to the gradient of the tangent at the same point. But now when we go to part B, whereby we are finding equation of the normal, normal is usually 
a perpendicular line to a tangent at a particular point. That means gradient of this normal, we can call it gradient 2 now, is going to be negative 1 out of 24. So that when we multiply it with 24, the gradient of the tangent now, we get negative 1 in the sense that normal and tangent are perpendicular at that particular point. And the point is the same. Therefore, we're going now to use the same, same approach of the gradient. We express it because at the point x equals to negative 3, y is 73, change in y out of change in x, x minus negative 3, it becomes plus 3. Now we can uh, cross multiply. We can cross multiply. We get 24y minus 24 by 7, 3. This is going to be 1752 equals to, we will have negative x mm -hmm, minus 3. Yeah, negative x, negative 3. <clears throat> then now we can group like terms together. Or rather, rearrange our equation to have 24y there. Negative x, this is going to be. Uh, when we subtract 3, because this one becomes positive, we're going to have 1749. 1749. So this is the equation of the normal. We can make it y equals to mx plus c. This side, when we divide, we'll get 72. Mm, 7 over 8. So that is uh, the equation in the form y equals to mx plus c. So that is the equation of the normal. That is the equation of the normal. The next, <coughs> we are told to determine stationary points. It should be noted that uh, stationary points are also called uh, the turning points of a curve. And these are the points where the gradient becomes zero. At the turning points, gradient is zero. So at turning points, dy dx of a curve is zero because the value of gradient at all turning points or all stationary points is zero. So we say now 12 x squared plus 18 x minus 30 equals to zero. And now we can solve this equation. We can see something like zeta 6 is common all through. So 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals to 0. Yeah, the equation is now simpler when we divide through by 6. And now we can, we can solve it using uh, completing the square. 2x squared plus 3x equals to 5. Then I add a constant now to both sides. A constant which is provided by 3 out of 2 squared. And that becomes 9 over 4. 9 over 4. So now we can factorize this side. Mm -hmm. Remember for us to apply the completing square method. The coefficient of x squared must be 1. Therefore, I should have divided by by 2 or through before, before going to this step. So we can have a pardon there. We can have a pardon there. Then we have this equation as x squared plus 3 out of 2x. Then we will add a constant here, which will give us when we take negative 5 over 2 to the other side, it becomes 5 out of 2. We also add a constant to this side. Now, this constant is given by 3 over 2 divided by 2. Then we square. So, it becomes 9 out of. When we divide by 2, when we divide by 2, it becomes times a half. So, it becomes 3 over 4. And now we are squaring. So, it will be 9 over 16 and 9 out of 16. 
we add the constant to both sides. Mm -hmm. So we can factorize this side. We will have x plus 3 out of 4 equals 2. Let me combine the other side now. 5 out of 2 and I add 9 out of 16. This is giving me 3 and 1 out of 16. 3 and 1 out of 16. This will be 48 plus 1 in a 49 out of 16. Therefore, we can take square roots both sides. x plus 3 out of 4 equals to plus or minus. This is 49 out of 16, which is 7 over 4 when we take square root. Yeah, 49 out of 16 is 7 over 4. So now we can get the value of x, the two values of x now. x is either... 7 over 4 minus 3 quarters minus 3 over 4 and that becomes 1 or negative 7 over 4 negative 7 over 4 then uh, we subtract three quarters this is 2.5 negative 2.5 therefore these are the two values of x at the stationary points determine the stationary points. so we have the values of x at the stationary points that means now for us to get the stationary points themselves the stationary points themselves then we will need the values of y at those points so when x is 1, what is going to be the value of y? Again, we go to the original equation that will give us y. Therefore, when x is 1, the value of y will be 4 into 1 cubed plus 9 into 1 squared minus 30 into 1 plus 10. This is going to be negative 7 negative 7 so this is one turning point the other turning point when x is negative 2.5 what is going to be the value of y negative 2.5 so we begin again for into negative 2.5 cubed plus 9 into negative 2.5 squared minus 30 into negative 2.5 plus 10 this is equal to 78.75. 78.75. So the turning points now, to be precise, are 1, negative 7, and negative 2.5, 78.75. So now those are the two turning points for this curve. Finally, we are stating the nature of each of the turning points. For us to determine the nature, we need the values of x at those turning points. So I'll begin with x, then the value of gradient, then the nature, or rather a sketch of how the curve behaves at that point. So we need the values of x at the turning points. We also need the value of gradient dy dx. Then we also need the behavior of the curve, how the curve will be changing. So the first value of x, I will begin with, a, you know, the one which has a negative. I will begin with negative 2.5. Because this one has a negative. Then after 2.5 we can go to a value like 1. And before negative 2.5 we can have a value like negative 3. Uh -huh. Then the other curve which begins at 1. We can go to a value like um, 2. We can go to a value like 2. So we want to examine for the first turning point before 2.5. How is the curve behaving? 
and after 2.5 how will it be behaving then for the second one now that one is already here we will be knowing at 2.5 uh, at one and after and after therefore i'll begin by saying the gradient at this point is just zero and the gradient at this point is also zero the gradient at this point is also zero what about gradient before negative 2.5 at a point like 3 so at negative 3 the value of gradient is going to be so the gradient function which is 12 into negative 3 squared then we add 18 into negative 3 minus 30 this is giving us 24 then after after the turning point the gradient is becoming a zero what about at a point like a, okay we could have started with negative one let's have negative one so that we have at the turning point zero before the turning point and after the turning point so let us look at negative one what will be gradient so we will have 12 into negative one squared plus 18 into negative one minus 30 this will be negative 36 therefore the gradient here is negative 36 negative 36 uh -huh. the other turning point is one the other turning point is one so at one gradient is zero what about after one whereby the value of x can be two what will be gradient 12 in two we have two squared plus 18 into two minus 30 this will be 54 so now we can examine these turning points and we will say at negative 20 negative 2.5 gradient is zero before it's 24 and after it's negative 36 so this is a positive gradient it becomes zero then it changes to a negative gradient and it means the turning point where x is negative 2.5 is a maximum point therefore negative 2.5 78.7 is a maximum point it's a maximum point the next turning point is where x is 1 the value of gradient there is 0 but just before that turning point we have a negative gradient and immediately after that turning point we have a positive gradient so this is 0 this is a positive gradient so the gradient is changing from negative through 0 to positive that means point 1 negative 7 which is the other turning point is a minimum point it's a minimum point therefore a minimum point gradient is changing from negative through zero to positive a maximum point gradient is changing from positive through zero to negative